Hey guys, it is Taylor Grant, and today I will be showing you how to do some cleaning, oiling, troubleshooting, and general maintenance on this Olivetti Letra 32 typewriter. Here we have the mechanism that locks and unlocks this portion so it doesn't move during traveling. Also, this folds down for traveling as well. This one did not come with this cover. You could buy it as an additional piece. This is the case. Normally it would come with this for traveling. It was zipped up on the sides. It was made in Barcelona, Spain in 1963 and was very popular among college students and journalists. It was noted that the portability of it was very desirable, even though the keys and the actual function of the typewriter was not as smooth or convenient as other typewriters of its time. All right, so I'm going to show you exactly what you will need in order to get this thing going again and I will show you guys how to do it. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing that we are going to need is some oil. You can get this general all-purpose machine oil at your local store. Make sure that it has sewing machine, typewriter, small key, small machine oil and you should be good to go. You can use this, it's not necessary, it is just nice to put the oil where you need it. The next thing you are going to need is a set of paint brushes. They are special kind of paint brushes, I'm not quite sure, I didn't get the name or the brand, but as you can see they are not very smooth. They do have a coarse texture, kind of like hay, I guess. Um, I did not get a name and it has rubbed off over time. Next you will need paper towel q-tips, a flathead screwdriver, extra ink, and an old towel. All right, so once you have gathered your materials, we are going to actually start at the keyboard. It is something that we can clean up and take care of before we open everything up on the inside. As you can see, there is a lot of debris. You will find mostly pencil shavings, and I have found that little green piece right there is probably bristles to a typewriter cleaning brush. You will also find stuff like that all over in the keys and in the bottom. I'm just going to run my brush through here and get all of this extra stuff off before I come in here and open everything up. Most tops just pop off. You don't really have to work that hard to get them off. And each typewriter ribbon comes off differently as well. So you'll need to check with yours to see how that one comes off. This particular one does screw off the tops, just like you saw. So now that you've taken the top off and the ribbon, you're going to just place all of that stuff to the side so we can get in there and start cleaning up everything and making sure that everything works. First, I'm going to go through all the mechanisms on here and make sure that everything works, look at how it works, see if it works, do some testing, make sure that each piece is working properly. And if it isn't, I'm going to note it. I'm just going to take this brush and start cleaning up all the debris that I see in and around the entire cavity of the typewriter. You won't need to use any type of cleaning material or chemical on this. The brushes are just fine. Basically, all you're doing is getting all that dust and pencil shavings out from inside of the typewriter. I did move into the living room because TV, so that is what I will be doing for the next couple of minutes. I am just going to be brushing everything that I see on this typewriter. It does not need to look dirty in order for me to clean it up. One of the very first things that I noticed when I was doing troubleshooting was that this bell was not working properly. So what I'm first going to do is to check and see if the mechanism that pulls the bell even is working properly, which it does look like it is. Most of these mechanisms you can find fairly easy what other part that they're connected to. The next thing I'm going to do is just go through every single key and press it down and see if it gets stuck or how fast or how slow it is. Right away, the Z was very slow, so I made sure to note that. 
If you have a slow key, you're just going to want to take a peek at it and see if there's any other bigger issues that is happening or going on other than just possibly needing some grease. So now I am going to grease up all the pieces and you will quickly see how fast and how things change drastically when all you do is put some oil on these keys. Now I'm going to put oil on every other working part that I can see. You're not going to want to put a lot of oil, you're just going to want to put a small drop on every mechanism that you see moves and then you're going to want to move that mechanism and work the oil in. Again, you will quickly see how nice and smooth and easy things are beginning to move once you've put that oil on it. Do not worry, we're going to clean up the oil later. And after some oiling, the bell works fine. Now you're going to just want to use your keyboard, use the typewriter, work all that oil in every part. Just play around with it for a little bit just to get that oil moving around. Now I'm going to take my brush and just go through here again and clean up some oil. Sometimes the oil will loosen up some debris and then you're going to want to take your q-tip and clean up the remaining oil. You do not want a ton of oil hanging around on your keyboard or hanging around on your machine when you're trying to use it. This part usually takes me longer than the actual cleaning itself. It's very important to get the machine clean. Here we have the mechanisms that move the ribbon back and forth. The purpose of this mechanism is so that when the ribbon is full on one side, it'll automatically lock up and shift so then there's no stopping in writing and you can continue to type as it moves back and forth each time each side gets full. So again, I'm just going to make sure that each mechanism works as I'm going through and cleaning it. You'll find a lot of oil has sunken down in this area just based on gravity. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to go in there and clean up very nicely in that area because that is not an area that you want to be gunked up with oil or with any other type of debris. Now I'm going to put in a piece of clean paper for testing. Having this paper in there is going to clean up some additional oil, oil off the keys, oil off the roller, and you'll be able to see how your machine is working. These right here are the margin lines on the back, and you can move this to correlate with the margins on the front so you can see when and where to stop when you're typing. You're going to want to adjust these in a position where this side is pulled out so it's easier to adjust. And then on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to push it all the way over as well where it's easy to adjust. This mechanism right here is going to adjust your line spacing, zero, one, two, or three, and that is going to give you the gap in between the lines while you're typing. When you push this mechanism over, it'll automatically bump up the line spacing that many times that you have set it. Now you're just going to want to use your keyboard and use each key and make sure that all the oil is coming off of the keys and you will find that there is a lot of old ink on these keys as well, which will leave some debris on your paper. You're going to want to make sure that your paper is semi clean once you're done and each key is clean as well. You're going to want to pull out the paper and the next thing you're going to do is take that piece of paper towel, fold it up really nice and tightly, and rub it along the roller. There's going to be a lot of oil. Mine had a lot of oil. Don't worry, with enough elbow grease it will come off. You're going to see a lot of ink on here as well. You're just going to want to roll and clean, roll and clean, and make sure that the entire thing is cleaned. You will notice as well that the more you use it, the more oil will come onto the roller, and that is okay. It will come off eventually. So when and only when there is absolutely no grease on your typewriter, you can put your ribbon back on. I will be putting on my old one again. Um, I can see that there's not a lot of ink on here, but I do want to keep it on there just because I don't plan on using this typewriter very often. So I don't want to put a new ribbon on it that will just sit there and dry up as well. 
All right, so what you're going to want to do is start off on one side or the other. You're going to want to loop it around the shaft and then put it in between those two teeth or those two prongs that are just right there. You're gonna to wanna to hold them down with your finger as you put the ribbon on. Place it over, skip the middle, don't worry about that yet. Again, through the prongs, around the shaft, and then on to the unit again. Next, you're going to want to lower the shift key and put it in locked position. That is going to allow this part to go down in order for you to be able to access that part easier. Now you're going to want to push the ribbon down on the bottom and then you're going to want to push it up towards the top. Once you're in there, you will see what I'm talking about. All typewriters are different, but most follow the same guidelines, which are four teeth, two on each side. The ribbon will go down the bottom teeth and up through the top teeth, and that allows easy access to take it in and out and adjust the ribbon as you need. Now you're going to want to tighten them up on either side and just screw them in. And again, it doesn't matter which side is activated, as in the gears, which is going to pull the ribbon across as you're typing, because as this basically adjusts itself. So hopefully you won't need to be doing anything besides placing the ribbon on. And again, each typewriter is different. For example, my Smith Corona just actually pops up. They do not screw or lock in. For example, this is my Smith Corona. As you can see, each mechanism is completely different, but it does do the same thing. As you can see, a proper typewriter will move as the ribbon flows across. One side is activated and it is pulling. The other side is loose and it is just being dragged. All right, as promised, we are going to go over an example problem. Here, I have just got some new ribbon and I have put it in. As far as I know, I am following all the directions and it looks like it is going in properly. Both sides are through and I was able to get it onto the other side tight and the other side went on through the shaft and the teeth perfectly with no issues. So right away, I notice when I go to type the far right elbow that has the ribbon attached to it is bumping up and making my paper quite dirty as I'm typing. I also notice that the ribbon looks like it is being pushed up, which is causing the elbow to make my paper dirty along with eventually the ribbon looping itself around and causing issues. First, I'm gonna push you through some troubleshooting tips, which is basically just using your typewriter, looking at every mechanism as you're using it, looking at why and how things are running. Right away, I've noticed that my ribbon is not working. If you notice, neither one is activated and neither one is geared neither one is working properly. The first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that it is screwed on properly and I'm going to type again. It does not look like that has fixed the issue, so my next step is going to be taking off the ribbon and seeing if those mechanisms are even working properly. You can find out which side is activated by trying to twist it. It looks like this side is activated, so I'm going to take the other one off and I'm going to see how and if it is actually working. And by doing this, you can see that once you start typing, hopefully the ribbon should be moving. And that is how you can tell if that mechanism is actually working itself. As you can see, once I start typing, the ribbon actually does begin to move. And that way we can see that it is working and the mechanism is being pulled. So now we can narrow down our search to potentially the lever itself or possibly that side if it is not working. Now you can guess the answer just by looking at this clip. You can see what is wrong with the actual ribbon or what is wrong with the ribbon installation. In the next clip, I will show you the solution and how to fix it. All right, the solution to all that troubleshooting and all that headache is as easy as the wrong installation on the ribbon. I did choose this example just to show you how easy and how simple these things can be and how 
the smallest little change to this type of mechanism can cause the entire thing not to work properly. As you see, the elbow itself works properly. It never had any issue. It was just user error. Next, I'm going to show you how to take off the bottom metal piece of the typewriter. You might want to put something soft underneath where you're going to um, place your flathead screwdriver. You're just going to want to place it directly underneath the metal, underneath the grommet. And if the grommet is good, the rubber part, it shouldn't break, but sometimes it does. And in that case, you'll need to replace them in order for the metal piece to stay on the bottom of the typewriter. Now that you've got the metal portion off the bottom, you can see how much oil has dripped down and you're just going to take the same brushes and clean the inside of the cavity. You're just going to follow the same technique as we did on the other side where we take the brush and we take the q-tips and you're just cleaning everything up, checking all the mechanisms and making sure that everything is working properly. Now you're going to want to turn it over and just give the whole top a good wipe down. I am using baby wipes here. You can use paper towels or any other type of light cloth. I don't recommend using anything but possibly a light soap and water solution. I personally would just not want to risk any chemicals getting on this machine. One of the most famous authors who wrote No Country for Old Men, Cormac McCarthy, is one of the more famous people who have said that the Olivetta Lettry 32 is their favorite. He said that he wrote every single book he ever wrote on it, and it sold at auction for over $250,000. Now you're just going to take the same thing that you were using to wipe down the outside and clean up all the keys. This is going to be the most satisfying thing you do. Make sure to place a finger underneath just to support the keys as you're cleaning the top of the key and you will be surprised how much old gunk, ink, and just finger schmutz is on the top of these keys. Now you're going to want to place the bottom back on. There are slots on this portion where they just easily clip in and when you turn it over you will see how easy it is to pop them right back on if your grommets are good. And again if they are bad you'll just have to replace them. You can type without this on the bottom. It just isn't great for long term use. Last but not least you're just going to want to take a hot water and soap solution and clean the outside of this. All right, guys, there you have it. Here is your clean Olivetti Letra 32. I hope I helped, and if you guys have any other questions, just leave a comment below. Happy typing, guys. Bye.